Hi guys, this is Dan and welcome to Engelgeist. Uh, thank you for tuning in. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me on Patreon, thank you so very much for your support. That financial support greatly helps me um, for all of this content that I put out. I do greatly appreciate it. If you guys are interested in booking a private reading or um, supporting me over on Patreon or following me on my social media, any of that stuff, it's all located in the drop down menu on the daily radio readings. It is a reading that is shared by the collective conscious. Um, uh, we share a lot of experiences, energies and things on the planet all at the same time. Uh, so that's kind of what this reading is about. It is for all signs. And it is originally created for Saturday, the 5th of uh, February. But if you're seeing it on a different date and it's making sense to a situation that you might be working on or going through or experiencing, use the reading. Don't worry about the date. For those of you that tune in regularly, we build upon the Sunday underpinning energy and the cards that we've seen previous to this week. But you know what? If the reading works, if it fits put it on and wear it, um, allow it to help validate you, support you in whatever decisions or choices you're making, but don't let it make those decisions or choices for you. So you want to always be exercising your highest intelligence and intuition in your life. And you always want to be using your free will. Don't be handing your free will over to anybody other than yourself. Um, we can be, have a tendency to do that often, myself included. So... Um, what else do I need to say? If you like the reading, please hit the thumbs up button. That helps greatly. If you um, uh, are new to me, please subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that notification bell so that you get notified when I go live and share the video out on your social media feeds. I'm in need of, you know, uh, help with that. So if you know how to share out, if you're an Instagrammer or a YouTuber and you know how to put it out there on Instagram, please feel free to do so. All right, so let's get into this and see what cards we have for today. We're working with two different decks now. Uh, we have been for the past couple of days. And so let's see what we got going on for today. Interesting. We have the way shower. Hey, neck it. <laughs> That's the first thing I was... Hold on, though. I want to know. I think this might be the Hermit, but I'm not sure because it's a name that I'm not... Um, I want to call macrocosm cards instead of microcosm. So they're the larger... The major arcana in here is called macrocosm. So let me just see... Oh, it's the star. Very interesting. So the, the star is my favorite card of the deck, quite frankly. I would not have associated this with the star. But um, the star is Aquarian energy, which we are in Aquarius season. We actually saw the star, I believe, last week in the weekly, did we not? Let me look at my calendar. Oh, she was the beginning of this week. In the Sunday reading was the first card of the star. So we're seeing the star now again in a different deck. Very, very interesting. The star is usually depicted by a woman. This looks like a, a gentleman with long hair, but they are pointing to the future, right? In, in my opinion, I love the softness of the color of this. And I love the peace, the centeredness, the sort of like the elegance of the body, right? The groundedness of the feet on the ground and standing sort of straight, firm in who we are. The star to me is that quiet calm, that peace that kind of comes over us when we know what's true for ourselves. It's usually, it's the card that follows the, um, the tower, right? And so it's the disruption of the tower that leads us to the peace and calm and awareness that comes with the star. Now, what I find interesting about this, and for some, those of you that might be watching this on a different date way in the future, what we've seen in the past two days is um, the Ace of Swords, which is also air element. So there's something going on with a, 
ideally where we are coming to a place of peace within our mind, a clarity within our mind, hopefully, and um, an awareness within our mind that should be bringing us more peace, bringing us to a place where we want to be. Um, the star to me is oftentimes a subtle card. It's not a card that like bangs you over the head and really goes, hey, over here. It's like you have to kind of, uh, with the star, in my opinion, right? Because I don't speak for all tarot readers, but in my opinion, with the star, you have to kind of be on the lookout for this energy. It's a glimmer. It's a shift. It's a, um, it's, it's a sheen or a shine. There's a million stars in the universe, right? All shining brightly. There's also an opportunity here, or when I think of the star, it's about us believing in ourselves, us finding maybe the way within our own mind, within our own selves, to instill in ourselves uh, a sense of peace, a settling, maybe, at the end of this week. Now, underneath this card is the Eight of Cups. Eight of Cups would indicate a walking away of sorts, right? And it's interesting to me that from an emotional situation that no longer serves us, either an emotional situation, emotional behavior, whatever that may be, um, that doesn't serve us, whether we're doing it to someone else or someone else is doing it to us. It's like, we have to be the bigger person, whether it's painful or not, we have to go through it. We have to feel it, let it go. And that eight is a, is a, to me, a card of balance. It's that finding that emotional, maybe, you know, for lack of a better term, sobriety, uh, emotional sobriety within ourselves to be the adult and to move forward in our lives. There's always a bit in a, in a natural eight of swords, uh, or sorry, eight of cups. They are moving forward um, away from the situation. There's somebody walking away in the same way that the star is pointing its hand in this card, right? So this way shower, this sense of peace within us, this truth within us, although it may be just a glimmer or a slight quiet voice, we need to listen to it. And we need to allow it to lead us away from old habits, emotional habits, uh, that no longer serve us. If we, there's this phrase, uh, don't hide a light under a bushel, I believe. That's what I feel like these cards are trying to tell us. Um, the, uh, the, um, the two Ace of Swords that we saw day to day, back to back in the last in the last reading, one of them was filmed four days ago, and then I went down to Mexico, and then I did the reading yesterday late, and I shuffled the cards, and the Ace of Swords came out again, Ace of Air in this deck. And to me, this is about new thought, new um, transformations happening with us at a deeper level that is bringing us more peace, uh, more truth, uh, more of a sense of possibly self in who we are, right? That would be those aces, right? Because it's the number one. But also the star has that quiet quality of um, peace within ourselves enough to be okay with who we are in all our aspects. So allow this energy to show you the way. And that way might just be by walking away from the whatever our eight of cups is, right? Whatever our emotional... Um, pains are of the past, our experiences around them, our thoughts around them should be transforming and changing. And our truth is what we need to hold on to. Does that make sense? That would be the star to me too. So let's see what's going on with the Seeker Oracle. Okay, this card definitely wants to be out. The Seeker's Journey. Interesting. She's kind of giving me star vibes too, quite frankly, with the water and the the light and all of that and being a feminine. I love that we have like a masculine and a feminine here. I love that we have, uh, to me, they almost look like they belong together. It almost looks like the finger of the star is pointing to the word, the seeker's journey on the card, the way shower is showing us the way to the seeker's journey. I like that she's in this boat gliding over the water peacefully with her own light shining and guiding her way. Right? She's trusting her own light and that would be the trust in the star, the truth in the star, the quieter, subtler voice within us that allows us to understand what is true for us and, um, 
and then to maybe take, I don't want to say take action, but to like sort of like just be in that place, to be in that truth, to be in that showing of the way, right? To realize that that is where we belong or where we are headed, where we are moving towards, where we are seeking to journey to. Let me read you The Seeker's Journey. The Seeker's Journey is one of self-exploration, self-discovery, and self-realization. While on their journey, a seeker will face tests of faith, patience, resilience, and fortitude. They will face their fears and suffer hardship, but they will choose to see an opportunity to learn in every moment. They believe that everything happens for a reason, even when the reason is not apparent or one that is easy to accept. That's interesting because I was just speaking to a friend on the phone about this. <laughs> they believe because they understand that every effect has a cause, every path will offer a reward and consequence, and both choice and circumstance determine the outcome. They wish to learn so they can navigate life with more confidence. They seek to understand so that they can make better choices. A seeker has an innate desire to know and understand the mysterious workings of the world and the universe, both the spiritual and the physical. They are curious, questioning. Life, the way it moves us, shapes us, is a puzzle they want to solve. But paradoxically, they are also willing to embrace the mysterious unknown. The destination will be arrived at when it is meant to and not a moment before. Ultimately, it is the journey itself that matters. Knowledge and growth cannot be forced, for the mind can only conceive of what the eyes are willing to see. There will be signs along the way. Sometimes the seeker will see them, and sometimes they will miss them. The journey can be a winding one that has the seeker revisiting a moment more than once to discover something that has, was not seen or understood initially. Sometimes the lesson offered is not the one that is learnt the first time, or it is offered in stages, so the information revealed heals instead of doing harm. Are you ready to journey with more awareness and intent? And so to me, when I think about that, of more awareness and intent, the star would be that quiet idea of, of agreeing to doing this, to seeking, to shining, to, uh, to using our own light to guide our way through our life and understand our life a little bit better, um, uh, to take more sort of responsibility or possession of who we are and our experience and then ownership of how we react or uh, um, interact with those experiences, whether they be positive or negative. Does that make sense? Now, let's look to the grounding stone. And the grounding stone is on obsidian, which is very grounding and it also wards off any negativity and the word is vision the grounding stone for the week was honor right honoring ourselves honoring maybe those around us honoring our spirit honoring you know we saw cards about honoring like uh, the keys to wisdom or or he he healing the inner child um this vision to me says like honoring our own internal vision of what is it that we want how is it that we want it? And are we willing to go after it? Are we willing to sort of try and attempt to chase it, even if it doesn't, even if we fail, even if um, we may have to revisit painful, you know, experiences that we felt we've already dealt with? Uh, can we still continue to sort of ground in the vision of, of the life that we want to create or the... Um, the experience that we want to live out. Does that make sense? So grounding in that vision that anything is possible, that the way can be shown to us, that all of it is part and parcel with it. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly. It's all part of the experience. It's all part of the, the journey. And if we play the role of this, like sort of this seeker, and we tap into the vision, I believe that we can create that for ourselves. Um, we can embrace that and we can move along it in a, in a, with a, like a quiet, um, sort of peaceful, uh, sense of who we are, uh, especially within our mind and thoughts, uh, seeing, you know, that we saw that Ace of Swords twice 
and allow that to be our guide this week. This is the end of this week's readings. So um, envision your life how you want it to be and then begin to move towards it in faith, in a calm, quiet, subtle faith would be my word to you today. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you'd like, and I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much and take care. Bye-bye.